Hi, I'm Bob Burridge here and I'm here at the Cheap Joe Workshop and today we're doing a quick lesson on how to paint a pear. We'll make it real simple. Don't worry about your drawing skills or lack of drawing skills. And if you've ever taken any kind of drawing lessons, you know that you break everything down to a simple ball and a triangle and a square. So we're going to do that today. And uh, I have some pretty simple uh, materials out of here. I have some Cheap Joe's Prime uh, really good uh, acrylic paints. I am doing, going to be doing this in acrylic paint. I have my brush. I have my white. My white paint can be either gesso or titanium white. Both are just fine. I have a little bit of black in my black tube here. I have pull, squeeze everything out, get it ready. Uh, notice I'm using the table as my palette. This table has been covered with a polyethylene, so that means nothing will stick to it, but it makes a great palette. Okay, and open up my tubes of paint here. I squeeze it right out, right on the table. And also some of this red. We have the primaries today. Let's keep it simple. We have the red, the yellow, and of course the blue. Now, to paint a pear, all you need to do, as I mentioned to you, is you paint a circle and a triangle. So, a little water on my brush. Uh, this is watercolor paper. I've already put orange on it. I always start with an orange or at least a warm colored background. And the first thing I'm going to do here is uh, a circle, okay, and a triangle on the top of it. Pretty simple. And now we're going to have it sitting on a table. There you are, sitting on the table. And now we're going to pretend, and this is the most important part, is where is the light coming from? Is it coming from the left side or the right side, behind me, above me, where is it coming from? So in this case, we're going to make sure that the light is coming from this direction. I even put a little arrow either on the painting or on the table over here like that to remind me, where is this light coming from? Here we go. Short, choppy strokes. And that's the most important part of this also, this painting exercise. We're going to do short, choppy strokes, which means I'm going to let some of that orange peek through. That's what gives it that excitement, the almost that French Impressionist look to it. So we're going to be doing short, choppy strokes. So I'm going to take that ball that I did and give it a little bit more of an exciting look. There we go. Now, to me, that's a little more exciting of a pair. And uh, so we still have the circle and we still have the triangle, but now it's a little bit more organic. Here we go. The light's coming across the pair. It's going to be the brightest at that spot. Okay? Now, if you imagine if you're in a dark room and the light's coming across here, it's going to be light on the wall over here, believe it or not. So we're going to put some light over here in the back wall over here. There you go. Real simple. Let some of that orange peek through. Wash off my brush. Now I'm going to go to the darkest dark. Darkest dark in this case, even though this is kind of a yellowish orangish pear, right now I'm just going to use a little bit of dark red in here for the dark side. Think of the dark side of the moon. Light doesn't go around the corner, so it's going to be really dark. Let some of that orange peek through. Well, I have that dark color also on my brush. I'm going to go to this side of the, of the room, so to speak, the back wall. Again, let some of that orange peek through. This is what gives it that excitement look, that je ne sais quoi, I like to say. Ooh, big word. Here we go. And short choppy strokes all over the place. Now to really emphasize where the light's coming from, I'm going to make sure that I have a shadow. The shadow's going to go off. Look, I made the shadow kind of bluish because the shadow tends to be uh, the opposite color, complementary color of the light source. So we're going to pretend that this is uh, the sunlight. So the shadow's going to be, uh, since the sun's orange, that's what they tell me, uh, that the shadow's going to be slightly on the blue side. So starting the shadow, and it also helps to anchor, helps to uh, uh, put this down on the top of the table. So the rest is now just messing around. This is the basic element. So what I have here is dark against light, dark against light, if you keep remembering that. So now we're going to go right into the table. Change the color of the table a little bit. Here we go. It looks kind of like a light blue. Leave some of that orange again peek through. That's what gives it that French Impressionist look. Come over here, a little bit over here. That's the back edge of the table. Now I'm going to just throw paint all over the place and have fun. I have the basics down. The basics are down. Now we're going to throw in some color. Why not? Let's make this. This is called painting. So this is not coloring it in. This is not like a coloring book. We're actually throwing paint all over the place. What I like about these particular paints here is that they happen to be transparent, which means I can pick up some of the colors underneath here. There we go. Nice and simple like that. And so I have nice bright yellow over here, that pair is nice dark on this side. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow over here too. There we go. I, have, I still have my lights and darks down, but now I'm giving it some variation. Variations. 
that's what makes it a fun painting to look at. There we go, nice and bright, simple. Now, if you can paint a pear, you can paint any kind of fruit or vegetable, even portraits, because they're still dealing with an organic shape. There we go. Now I'm going to have some fun and add some blue, more blue into this red area. Because it is transparent, I can put some blue in here. It's going to have kind of a purplish look to it. Again, it helps to anchor. This is just crazy, isn't it? But that's what gives it an excitement. Show all the brush marks. Don't hide all this stuff. Show the viewer how much fun it is to be a painter, not how difficult it is. So this is not airbrush. So you want to show the brush marks. Show them. I even use my fingers sometimes. It's a great tool to have. And if something's not happening for you, and just use your finger. It's acrylic paint. You're going to be all right. I do clean my hands at the end of this. I'm going to come in here now with white. A whole lot of white, really emphasize that. See how much brighter that is. And there we go. And that's today's lesson on how to paint a pair. Pretty simple, straightforward. What we've done here, again, as a quick review, we have a circle, we have a triangle on the top, we have light coming across here. So that means this side of the pair is going to be light, that side of the pair is going to be dark. And, that, and so the back of the wall is going to be the same. So it's going to be dark over here and light over here. So again, what we have is dark against light, dark against light. I know you're really tired of hearing me saying that. But if you keep that up, this shows a lot of contrast. It shows the form of anything, again, any fruit or vegetable. And I should suggest to you, practice doing this over and over and over. And after a while, it becomes automatic. And here's what it looks like with the mat in it. Pretty simple. Now you try this home. Thanks for stopping by and stay tuned for some more lessons.